Hello you freaks, it's Carla and I'm here again in my kitchen today with a video called Freak the Technique. Today I'm going to be revisiting some classic tried and true techniques, confit, saute, and steam, but show you how you can use those techniques with ingredients that you may not have thought of using in the past. Everybody gets bored from time to time, don't have to reinvent the wheel or come up with a whole new thing. Go back to the tried and true, mix it up with a new thing. All of a sudden, you have a new way to make something amazing and delicious. It might even be dinner. Big thanks to Victorinox for sponsoring this episode. I have been using and cooking with these Swiss made knives for a very long time. And it is 100% apparent to me when I use them that you can really feel the quality. These knives are made at a quality for professional chefs, but with the home cook in mind. These wood handles are really beautiful. They're made of maple, but they don't need to be oiled. They're lightweight, so if you have small hands like me, your hand is not going to get fatigued. They are super sharp and beautiful, and they have a lifetime guarantee. So if you have any issue with your knife ever in your life, <laughs> it's guaranteed. I'm going to be using these knives in some of the techniques that I'm showing in today's video and you're gonna see exactly how versatile they are and how gorgeous they look in your kitchen. So thank you again to Victorinox. Head to the link in the description to shop for these knives. When I wrote Where Cooking Begins, I knew that I wanted to include like all of the basic techniques of cooking and one of them obviously is steaming, but I was very biased against steaming. I think one of the most sort of convincing things about why we all want to be steaming more is for cooking eggs. Steaming is incredible because when you add the eggs to a steamer, it does not reduce the temperature of the water or the vapor. If you put a bunch of eggs, cold eggs into simmering water, it drops the temperature down. Then you have to wait for it to come back to a simmer to start counting. So I'm going to show you how to steam eggs to get every texture from jammy to like a properly hard cook. So we have our eggs marked off with all of the minutes. I'm gonna turn the heat up because we're at a simmer. I'm covering this pot. I'm setting the timer for 12 minutes. And then every minute we're gonna take a couple more eggs out until we're at 12 minutes. And then I'm gonna show you what they all look like inside. So when you steam eggs at home, you will know exactly how many minutes you wanna cook your eggs to get the desired doneness. The number 12 egg is the only egg that cracked. And the reason that the white doesn't come pouring out when you do steamed eggs is because they're under pressure because of the steam. That's so cool. Now that these are chilled down, we're going to peel them. We're due. I'm actually really excited to see what minute of egg I am. Let's cut into these eggies. So you can feel how squishy the number six egg is. I'm going to cut through all of them so we can pick out the perfect egg. Last egg. I learned so much. One thing I learned is that even the 12 minute egg, which in my mind is like over if we were simmering, it's gone slightly chalky, but it's not like a not good egg. It doesn't have that little like greenish gray ring around the side. It's still beautiful at 12 minutes. Six is a little loose. I think seven is my ideal soft boiled egg. Eight is a gorgeous ramen egg. Nine is like, I would just want to snack on that one with a little bit of salt. 11 is like a great hard boiled egg for the classic, what people think of as a hard boiled egg for making deviled eggs. So for snacking out of hand, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> I think I'm going to go with nine. If this has not convinced you that you should be steaming your eggs before cutting them, I have nothing else to offer. Most people who have heard of confit have heard of the classic duck confit, or actually classic classic would have been goose confit with goose fat. But all confit means is cooking anything surrounded by fat. So in this case, I'm going to make lemon chicken with ordinary chicken legs and thighs. The first thing I'm going to do is just separate the drumstick from the thigh. The bones in the chicken leg and thigh are simple. There's not a lot of them. So the thigh bone connects right in here and you can kind of get an idea of where it is by just wiggling that back and forth. And that's 
where you want to position your knife to go through. Just sort of finding that spot, like I literally am not, it's just the gravity <laughs> is pushing the blade through the joint. You want to choose a vessel that's going to hold everything snugly. Things are going to shrink as they cook. You can comfy lemon by themselves or actually like a absolutely delicious little garnish to have. But for this, I'm gonna combine the two. There's gonna be lemon oils that infuse into the olive oil. The chicken fat is also gonna mix in there. It's sometimes hard to cut lemon super thin and having this little serrated is actually making it fly through. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I add the fat is season everything on both sides. Whatever flavors you like on your chicken will work as a chicken confit. You could put coriander in here, something like a garam masala, zatar. So now for the olive oil, I want to add enough olive oil to come just up to the top 80% of the chicken being covered. The olive oil is reusable. You're going to end up with like lemony, chickeny fat, oil that you can use for roasting vegetables. You can use it for sauteing. You can use it for anything that you would have used olive oil for. All right, so that's sort of like up to you know, the top little bit is sticking out. So my oven is at 300 degrees. I'm gonna cover this and pop it in and wait a couple hours and then we're gonna have shreddy, delicious lemon chicken. Okay, so you can see how gently that's been cooking. There's been shrinkage. It smells really, really chickeny and really, really lemony. In order to check if it's like truly done, what I'm looking for is like a slow barbecue pork rib. The meat is just flaking directly off the bone and show you how easy it is to just pop the bone out afterwards. So now you have a boneless skin on, beautifully cooked confit chicken thigh. This is what the lemons look like. They're totally tender, almost like they've been candied. If you weren't going to eat the lemon chicken today, let it cool down in the fat and then pack it into something covered with the cooled fat and put it into the fridge. And then when you wanna eat it, you'll scrape the fat to the side. You'll go for a little archeological dig and you'll take out as much chicken and lemon as you want. And then you can use that to make chicken salad with without even heating it, or you can crisp up the skin, which is what I'm gonna do. All right, so this is how it looks after it's been crisped and browned. It smells insane. I threw a little garlic clove in here. I threw a little oregano sprig. And while I was doing that, it occurred to me I could have put garlic and oregano in it from the very beginning. All those flavors would be infused. A little fresh lemon to brighten everybody out. Mm. Just a tiny bit of the drippings from the pan. I'm going to show you a cool way to cut zucchini to avoid the mushy, watery, seedy core. And we're going to saute to keep all of the brightness and the crunch. I'm just doing this very slowly so that you can see, but essentially I want to carve a little hump. What is this shape? It's thin at the ends where you go in. It's wide in the middle and there's no seed or core. So this is going to stay very crunchy and bright, and it won't have all of that waterlogged, slimy stuff in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is just continue down the length of the zucchini, kind of dipping down and dipping back up. It's like a fun little whittling energy. I learned this at my first restaurant job, a place called Montrachet from my chef Remy Lavand, and he did this to cut zucchini. For the sauteing of our beautiful little zucchini dippers, I don't know what to call them, I'm gonna use my spool method. Spool rhymes with cool, and it stands for salt, pepper, olive oil, lemon. The essential seasonings that will make pretty much anything taste really, really good. The only other thing to keep in mind when you're sauteing, the zucchini especially, is I wanna go pretty high heat, so like medium high to high, for not very long, so I can pick up color and keep the crunch. I'm gonna add just enough oil to coat the surface of the pan, and it's shimmering, which means it's nice and hot. We should hear a really good sizzle when these hit the pan. 
And the first thing I'm going to do is just toss to coat these with oil. Making sure that the vegetable is covered in oil is actually going to help it cook because the fat is the thing that is carrying the heat from the surface to the pan to the vegetable. Without oil, you get charring. With oil, you get browning. But now that they are tossed, I'm going to season them and I'm going to try not to move them too much while they cook because that's going to encourage the browning. These have great color already. This guy, that's the ideal situation, I would say. In this case, the crunchiness has to be prioritized over the browning. I have a really good browning. And if I keep going to try to get every single piece like perfectly brown, then we're going to have overcooked zucchini, which is the 100% main reason why we did this this way. The oil is beautiful. It's like bright green from the zucchini skin. Kind of Gorgina. Last step in spool is lemon. It's gonna wake everybody up. It complements all of this rich olive oil, the saltiness, the pepper, just everything. Tastes better with a little hit of acid. Frico Tecnico numero uno is my chicken confit, which I'm very excited to taste. I have a crispy, boneless chicken thigh. I have a little segment of gorgeous confit lemon. <laughs> mm. We need to be eating more whole lemons. Don't change a thing, you're perfect. I love you. My zucchini in a way that I actually enjoy it. Chef Remy's way. Crunchy. Spool technique. Would eat again. Six, seven, eight, nine. My number nine egg. First of all, all of these eggs are beautiful. So let's just applaud the eggs. But the number nine is my snacking egg. This is the meal prep egg. This is also a great like plain snack travel egg. And I'm just putting some of my favorite hot garlic. Ooh, yes. I'm gonna take a bite. Mm. The texture of the white and the texture of the yolk are basically the same texture, but they have a different flavor. And then you get the crunchy hot garlic. It's so good. Food is so great. I love food so much. I also love Victorinox. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode. We love Victorinox knives. We use them. There's a link in the video description so you can pick up some of your owns. And I hope that you will, for the love of all that is good, freak that technique.